us this night once we once again go to his work. This is first day night of Pazak Camp 2013. God is going to speak to us on the subject of temptations. Dear Heavenly Father, as I stand before these young friends of mine here, Lord, in this wonderful campus, as I take them to your word, as I take them to Genesis 39, and as I show from that pivotal chapter in your holy word some practical steps to overcome temptations that they will commonly face in the workplace, I pray, Lord, that your Holy Spirit will help me. I pray that these words that I speak, the stories that I narrate, the illustrations that I bring, the testimonies that I talk about, the word of God that we read will so inspire these young people, transform their lives so that they will be winners over temptations and so that they will be the kind of people which Hebrews 12 4 talks about. People who will not compromise on holiness even if they have to die, even if they have to go to jail. People who will be pure, come what may. In Jesus Christ, may I pray. Amen. Alright, uh, when I watch that video, especially the Rahul Dravid video, when he runs away from a Singapore journalist who tries to flirt with her, nobody in the room, when he sort of got up in a rage and ran out and then starts to lecture her, saying she should be concentrating on studies, my respect. But Robert greatly increased. But nothing, there's nothing like the story that I'm going to narrate to you from God's Word on beating temptations at work from Genesis chapter 39. So that's the chapter we're going to look at. But before that, I want to, some of you are having a question. Why do we need to even start the study? So to answer that question, I want 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 2 to be read. From the New Living Translation, my, uh, my wife uses this translation. It's a good translation. I recommend it to a lot of young people. Easy to understand, uh, but at the same time accurate. So, First Corinthians chapter one and verse two. She will read it. I will. I will uh, add it after her, and from that words, I will draw important lessons, and then we will launch into study. And uh, I will narrate a few stories, and then we will get into the study. All right. First Corinthians chapter. Chapter 1 and verse 2 in the New Living Translation. We are writing to the Church of God at Corinth. We are writing to the Church of God at Corinth. He's writing to believers in Corinth. Yes. You who have been called by God to be his own holy people. You have been called by God to be his, his holy people. Okay. Made holy by means of Christ Jesus. Being made holy by the means of Christ Jesus. Just as he did all Christians everywhere. Just as he did all Christians everywhere, all believers as well. So in 1 Corinthians chapter 1 and verse 2, the Bible teaches us a pivotal truth that we must understand. God has called us to be holy, yet we are holy. We are already holy, but God has called us to be holy. You know, some people cannot handle this. Seem in contradiction, but that's what the Bible teaches, and I can show you scripture after scripture that we are holy. We are already holy because we have gone to Jesus, we have knelt down, we have asked for uh, forgiveness for our sins. But at the same time, the Bible calls us for holiness. The Lord Jesus calls the church for holiness. The Lord Jesus calls believers for holiness. Already holy, but not yet holy. So called the holy. That's right. Now we are already holy, but on a day-to-day -day basis, already holy. We are, in fact, salvation is of three tenses. I'm, I'm sure you've heard this, but if you have not heard this, listen to me very carefully. Three, three, three tenses of salvation. We are saved by from the punishment of sin. When you walked forward, when you accepted Jesus, you are saved from the punishment of sin. And when you walk with Jesus every day of your life, overcoming temptation, you are saved from the And that is from the start of your new birth till the day you die or the, till the day you meet Jesus the second time. Till the second coming. You are being saved from the power of sin and finally 
a day will come when we will be saved from the very presence of sin. That's the third period. When Jesus will come back again. Or when you die, you'll go to a place where there's no sin in that place. That's heaven. So we need to keep this in mind as we launch into the study of overcoming temptation. Now, uh, if, if there's anybody here in this room who says, I have no temptation, can I see your hands? Thank God all of us are speaking the truth. If one of you raised your hand, I would actually, you know, one of us called you a black liar, and secondly, I would even take you to a doctor and have you checked out. Some of the finest people. Men of God, women of God who walked on the face of the earth, they were they had temptations. And I can tell you, some of this is graphic. I speak straight and I believe young people love straight talking people even though they hate they may hate, hate them for a moment, but down the line young people love to hear the great stuff. I can tell you about Jack Hathor, the man of God who gave us the hymn Majesty. He talks about a time, in fact he this is not a secret confession he made to some priest. This is something he mentioned in a message. He talked about a time when he went to a bank. He saw a beautiful girl who was a teller. Who was a clerk there or a teller there. And he, and, and, and then he, he says, if I, and when he came back to his car, he said, if I didn't do something, if I didn't go through my spiritual disciplines, and I will talk about those spiritual disciplines, I had ended, ended up thinking of that girl and masturbating in my car. He said this is a public meeting. I have to do something about it. Temptations, my young friend, are real. They are very, very real. I can tell you about what George Werber wrote in one of his books, the founder of Operation Mobilization, where he said he, he, he talked about being in a jungle, allowed to pray, and he saw some pornographic books that somebody had left behind as shooting practice for, you know, a pistol shooting and how that temptation got the better of him and how he came back to Jesus and asked for repentance. He didn't say, I'm the righteousness of God, I'm the righteousness of God. He came back to Jesus and asked for, for sorry. And he, and he directed how he, God has actually kept him victorious in that temptation. Though he was not perfect, but God had given him victory, uh, several victories. But he was honest. These are honest leaders who tell you things as it is. We live in a world of temptations. You are the corporate world. Let's talk about you. Let me read to you a passage from a magazine called Open, which talks about some techies who went to the US on official business. This is a real story from a current from a news magazine. A group of senior managers from an infotech company had just finished a sales conference in Dallas. They freshen up and meeting again in one of the hotel rooms for drinks and dinner. They are mostly Maharashtra, the state doesn't matter, but this is what the article said. They are in their forties, married and have children. Among them is Anand. His friends call him Wolf because that's what he is. Only in sheep clothing, wolf in sheep clothing. A few drinks later, the wolf whips up his laptop. The others in the group smile and shake their heads. They know the thrill. Wolf is famous for being up to date with the latest releases in the world of pornography. MMS clips are a specialty. The men who watch and drink a little more. Temptation. They are. When you're traveling because of your work, temptation is real. Cyrus Brochard, we saw him in that MTV clip. He said, for a 40 year old man to find heaven on earth that doesn't include any form of pornography is extremely difficult. Now, these are statements that people have actually made. But I'm here to tell you today it is possible to live in victory. And uh, as a preacher called to preach God's word to the Google generation, the present day people, the Facebook folk, the Twitter group, I have gone back to God's word and asking God to teach me lessons from His word to understand how we can overcome temptations. And I can find no other better chapter.
Then Genesis 39, for us to learn practical lessons on how to overcome temptations at work. Because that's what happens in Genesis 39. Now this is very important, young people. The Bible says the wicked flee when no one pursues, but the righteous are bold as a lion in Proverbs 28, 1. Now do you want to, if you want to have a light heart, anybody wants a light heart? Anybody wants a light that you're not looking over your shoulder. 